You're watching Clarksville Community Network. Produced by Goodwin Productions. Powered by CDE Lightband. Whether they're young or old, they enjoy the trains. The model train layout really creates a lot of excitement and enthusiasm for our visitors. It's been a great addition to the museum. The Customs House Museum and Cultural Center is so very fortunate to have a dedicated model train crew to manage and facilitate and present for over 30 years now a wonderful layout of model trains that we call the F&M Bank Huff and Puff Express. The train crew is made up of people that have invested themselves locally in this for many, many years. Uh, one particular person I'll mention is David Elliott. This is very much a people hobby. I've got friends who have hobbies. It's just themselves and their collection. Well, model trains is not that. It, it is very much a people hobby, and that's what I really like about it. David has been one of the ringleaders and dedicated to this over many, many years. He's been involved with this for over 30 years. I don't think he considers himself the, the chief engineer, but uh, I certainly would say of all the people that are associated with this, he's been with it as long, if not longer, than, than anyone. I'm the only one that's been here since the beginning that's still alive. <laughs> There was four of us that originally got things started. And I can't remember whether the museum came to us or we came to them, but starting in November of 88, we had a seasonal exhibit in the original 1898 building. See, Dave was actually, he was the original guy. They used to do small train layout for the holiday seasons in the old part of the museum before they built the new section. The model train layout that we currently have is a permanent part of our exhibition here at the museum. Originally began as just a temporary seasonal presentation. The volunteers who worked with model trains, they were invited here to the customs house to do a Christmas layout of their model trains. And that was so popular. We decided that it'd be something that at some point we would like to have a permanent installation. That opportunity really came about as a result of our expansion of the museum in 1996, where we tripled the size of our facilities. Somehow or another, they convinced the museum to let us have that space down there in the basement and came up with a permanent display. Here we are, 32 years later from that point, a permanent part of our museum presentation. Which is always changing. There's always something new going on with it. It took us four years after we moved in where the Hymason Hall is before we really had a sufficient amount of scenery that it looks pretty well like it does today. There are about three categories of train layouts. The electronic category, there is the model train layout, there is the toy train layout, and that's the category that we consider ourselves in. It's a case of doing something because you have fun doing it. It uh, has a lot of satisfaction. So the Huff and Puff Railroad is technically an exhibit, so it somewhat falls under my genre of work. We have a great staff of volunteers. 
What originally became just a one-time event of bringing in these model trains ended up being one of our biggest draws of the museum. The Huff and Puff Express originated to give people who enjoyed trains their own space. That made it possible not only to have the trains out year round, but also to expand what their layout was. Model trains are special. For one thing, they attract people. I don't know what it is, both young children, even the youngest, as well as adults. And it's been popular just as it was back in the late 1980s. Whether you've got a school group in here, or whether you've got a tour bus or a boat cruise, they all enjoy watching trains. We have a, an airplane that flies in a little circle. Funny thing is, all the kids are short, so they push the button, they can see the airplane. Parents come by, they push the button, they're all looking down, nobody ever sees the airplanes. Airplanes up there. <laughs> I know children love to come in and just press the buttons with the different things. Each button activates at least one different device. Some have sound, some have motion, some have lights, some have all of it. So it's just fun stuff. And one reason we've got 20 plus buttons down there is when we're not actually got an operator, they still got things they can push and see and, and make do so they can walk away. Well, we didn't see trains run today, but we sure did play with all the push buttons. The buttons get hundreds and thousands of pushes. Looking at the little kids with their eyes all huge and happy and jumping up and down, and that's the fun. And sometimes the grown-ups. <laughs> got 20 something buttons and if you push a button they won't see something happen. We're always looking for new accessories and everything and again with modern technology we can get accessories to do some fun things that we never had before. They change out the scenes seasonally everything from holidays to exciting new equipment that they bring in. I love the seasonal change outs. They spend a lot of time doing that. All of these things that you change, whether it's summertime for circus or fall for Halloween and Thanksgiving or Christmas and wintertime and then spring. We get all the seasons in. I think the most exciting addition to the trains was done a couple of years ago when we brought in the aliens. The aliens arrived and you could see them sucking up the cows into the spaceship and that's something that kids could do when there was no one running the trains. Kind of just a nice throwback to the old 50s and that sci-fi area that we big kids all love. You look for things that are going to get a lot of mileage or a lot of smiles. I've been here about 15 years. Still one of the new guys. I came to Clarksville in 1996, originally from Pennsylvania. I won the Yankees that stayed. <laughs> I manage a crew of 12 people. They make me do all the, you know, the crawling and under the table and stuff because, you know, I'm young, fish. <laughs> My place is mainly the maintenance. I do a lot of the maintenance stuff. Maintenance is a weekly thing. We uh, meet on Mondays to work on trains, and then we operate trains currently on Wednesday mornings and Sunday afternoons. Behind the scene, you know, I have to tear the engines apart every so often. 
fix pieces with me and some other guys. Grease, oil, shine it up, put it back on, make sure it runs. The wiring underneath the layout's a nightmare. It's a spaghetti nest underneath the layout. There were wires everywhere. And trying to figure out which one's going to what is really, really fun. <laughs> I just keep the train crew going. My parents always had a tree with a train underneath it. Kind of did that when I grew up and you know moved out on my own. Then when my son came around, that's when it really started. Just trains all the time. Kept bringing them here to the museum. We'd have to leave, you know, kicking and screaming. So finally, after a couple years, the guys asked me if I wanted to help out. I said, sure. So I've been here for 15 years after that. <laughs>I've done some of the landscaping. I'm not the best at it. Carl Eisman actually is our best guy for uh, doing scenery work. Richard, he's actually one of the newer guys. He's an operator, he runs the trains at least once a month, sometimes two if I need him to do it. Really great with organizing and he's learning the nuances of you know what we do setting up displays and changing out sceneries actually it's a really fun crew so everybody's got their own little jobs you know some people who are better at doing one particular job I try to steer them that way and like hey Carl can you make us a you know a little hillside of forest stuff over here that would be great <laughs> We have a ball just doing things and tormenting each other. <laughs> there are a few members of staff who do know how to run the train, so sometimes you might see an actual staff member there instead of one of the train volunteers. It's a big draw that we do when we bring groups in. I have not been designated. I may drive too fast for the trains. We don't need them flying off the tracks, so I'll just stick to button pressing. <laughs> That's one of the main things we have to caution our operators, especially a new one. And the younger they are, the most likely the faster they want to run the trains. The trains do run off the track, and it's not very good on the equipment, so <laughs> we try to hold speed down. This isn't related directly to the trains, but we have this cool little push button activity. You push a button and a little door opens up, which is to an outhouse. And so you push the button in and slowly the door opens and there's a guy sitting, you know, there on the outhouse toilet, reading a newspaper. Well, we also have a real log house inside the museum that people can go in and visit in. So I make that connection, you know, when you lived in a log house, back before we had water piped into our houses, this is what you would have used. Most people haven't had the experience of a, an outhouse. Here you can see one and can help spark some interest or people start asking questions. People are fascinated by the outhouse, so. <laughs> Whatever makes people curious is what then causes them to ask questions and, and want to learn. It's those kind of educational opportunities there. They're kind of subtle, but we never know what somebody is going to pay attention to and maybe not even think about it till somewhere, you know, later down the road. So it's the educational opportunity as well as the entertainment. It's good to see that uh, there's some enthusiasm being passed along to the next generation. We have people who come from many parts of the country. Particularly in the spring, summer, and fall, you have a lot of boat tours that come through here because we have a good dock for them to safely dock and people to unload and places for their tour buses to pick them up. 
This is one of their destinations. And then last year we had two national model train associations who had come to visit us. Separate clubs that uh, both decided to come to Nashville. Both of them brought bus loads of their attendees to Clarksville to see our model trains. That was a, a, a great compliment because if they valued this, then um, yeah, that says a lot. And this says a lot for our, our model train crew who are all volunteers. And I always emphasize that, you know, we tell them where, how this got started and this is how it continues to function because of these folks. wonderfully talented and dedicated crew of trained volunteers manage this layout and really, really add so much to the programming we offer here at the museum. Just like in all organization businesses and everything, you've got people that come and go for different reasons. We try to maintain a volunteer force of around 10 to 12, probably down to eight or nine right now. So always we are recruiting and you say where do you need these people well you need them to run trains and the museum would like us to run trains more often and therefore we need more volunteers when the uh, train volunteers are here they're running usually about three trains out of five at once they are just wonderful dedicated fun-loving people who enjoy presenting this train layout to children of all ages it's so much fun especially when we have tour groups which tour the whole country and tour, you know, different parts of the world. They particularly have seen many different types of layouts, some larger than ours or more elaborate or whatever, but then to have them marvel at what we have. We've got something, you know, really special here. The layout is not a model of Clarksville, but it does have numerous businesses. The one that I enjoy the most is the Piggly Wiggly. And the reason that's special, and it's special really to, to Clarksville, is because Clarence Saunders, who came up with the idea, the first self-serve grocery store in the country. Clarence Saunders lived in Clarksville, and he was a really young man worked in the grocery businesses at the time. This is in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And at that time, we took our list to the store and the uh, people who worked there would go around and pick up the products. You got to tell what you wanted, but you didn't get it to pick out the specific things. And this was time consuming. And so Clarence Saunders thought, well, there's gotta be a better way of doing this. And so it was, let's have the customer go through the store and when he started his first stores he was very clever he had a place you had to start and you had to go up and down all the aisles until you got to the, the checkout which of course was pretty smart because you know like myself and probably a lot of other people you start out with a list and once you get in the store and you're you know walking around amongst the different aisles you think oh and so you come out with more than you went in with and so Clarence used this, this is a way to increase the business. And so the first Piggly Wiggly was built in Memphis. By having that component in the trains where you push the button, lights come on and so forth. It, that also connects with over on Explorers Landing where the market area, we have a section about Clarence Saunders. So it's a way to emphasize like connecting things in different parts of the museum, like, like with the outhouse and connecting that with the log house. And oftentimes, you know, we don't think about where these people came from who came up with these ideas. You know, they came from places like Clarksville, all over the country, small towns and big ones. 
And so uh, it's nice to have Clarence Saunders as a part of our story. I ran trains this morning, and the fun thing was people come by and ask you questions, or as I said, make favorable comments, or reminisce about trains they had when they were children. Well, I wonder where my trains are now. Or, I've got my trains and I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> my family tells the story that there were trains under my first Christmas tree. I have a picture of me in a bassinet under that Christmas tree. I had trains gr growing up. My father, Phillips Elliott, when he retired, picked up the hobby of collecting trains. So a good part of the older trains that I have were a collection he and I worked on in the 70s till his passing in about 1980. But it was a fun hobby for him. Certainly got me well grounded, getting real busy. And then when we got into the 80s, then the story comes around to the museum once again. So that is a kind of natural extension. My grandmother, she had a little apartment and uh, they hung over the Banger Creek and right on the other side, the Pennsylvania Railroad would go by. So I'd be out on the balcony, you know, trying to get, you know, the engineer to blow the whistle. Little did I know at the time, there was a crossing gate right there and he had to blow the whistle anyway. <laughs> but I thought I was doing something really neat. <laughs> FNM Bank has been a title sponsor of this exhibit for many years. Continues to help us keep our train layout up to speed and in good condition. About 96, when they started building the layout, I think FNM Bank sponsored it back then. And over the years, they've graciously funded us with uh, money for various things. And they have helped us out for, for many, many, many years. That has allowed us to do some things in the last 18 months that we just have been thinking about for years in terms of lighting, really nice glass cases, so that the public can see a lot more display of our rolling stock. We're a lot more out front and visible now uh, with a lot, a lot of help. Also has allowed us to buy more what we call accessories. F&M Bank, they very much like what we're doing, and obviously so since they have contributed to us several times over the last several decades. I think it's been proven that as far as a, a permanent exhibit, I think you will find that trains are the top bill as far as the museum is concerned when it comes to bringing people to the museum. You kind of get used to something that you have, and it's when other people come in and say, wow, this is really neat, and have a good time with it and share their stories. You know, something from just a one-time visit, and now look where it is. The museum now has a volunteer coordinator. There is a person here now, if you call the museum uh, and say, I'm interested in volunteering for trains, they've got somebody to talk with you. And of course, we'll get involved in the conversation, but don't hesitate to call and ask questions and visit with us. It's a lot of fun and very satisfying. Although they're always looking for new volunteers, you know, they've got a great crew, very dedicated, who just love doing this for kids of all ages. 
hope that all of them feel that they have a sense of value to the museum because we certainly value what they do for us. Who can complain about playing with trains? It's a fun job. <laughs>